It's an exciting day down here at the ring with the technicians checking the LEDs to make sure the keys are working and they are on. And you can see the fighters now testing their skills and their punches and warming up. And now some slow practice punches from the player character performed by one of our judges and a knockout already. Testing his punching limits. We're going to have a reset by the referee here. Now that he's back up, let's go to an instant replay on that last one. Some more slow testing punches. We use A for light hits and D for heavy hits. You can see the critical hit animation there. And he's down again. Another reset, we can see the LEDs once again being shown, as well as taking the keyboard inputs for the fighter's punches. Some more quick punches being thrown here. Looks like red has blue on the ropes. Some more critical hits going off. You can see him staggering with that knockdown animation. The VGA splitches between modes. Some more punches from Red here. Looks like he's got him on the ropes. And now the fighters seem to be trading blows. Some hard hits coming out from both of them. Critical hits on both sides. But it looks like Red still has the upper hand with the player controlling him. Some more quick hits going back and forth. Punches on both sides. but it looks like Blue's about to go down. He's fading there. And there it is, a total knockout. So this module essentially uh, reads a da data from the keyboard and outputs both uh, LED values for the CPU and player health and a 4-bit keyboard value, which is used for the player attack type. Uh, so over time, the keyboard value is red. That is why we have a counter B, which indexes through a data cur, which uh, eventually fills in all the values for the data from the keyboard. And that uh, hex value is used in a case system to designate the respective attack types right here into a 4-bit value. Uh, and for the uh, player and computer health uh, right here. It uh, designates that all the LEDs are on and if the player and, or the computer health is deducted by 10, a single LED is brought off uh, by 20, both two LEDs are off and so on. Uh, going into the probability machine, the LFSR was able, was able to shift the registers and produce a pseudo random number. Think of it as a pseudo random number generator. The pseudo random number generator is inputted with a binary variable called if player. If the if player is one, that means that that means that the player is the one inputting to the problem the probability machine. Else, it would be the CPU. The probability machine for the player would be determine what type it is. This type is the keyboard input, and the random done would output is a status critical, normal, or emit. Else, it would just default be a no hit. The same is done to type heavy and also a type of no hit. For the CPU, since there is no type, we use the three states with a default being no hit, critical, normal, and emit. In the backend mux, we have in the backend mux, we have the keyboard input and various modules that control the gameplay logic. These variables and modules are the CPU and the player health, as well as the different types of attacks and attack states. We created a second clock to help register how the CPU would attack. While the player would be attacking through the keyboard input. The two, the player and CPU 
both use the LSSR module to call in the probabilities of them landing an the attack and what type of damage they output. This output is called the player's attack state or the CPU attack state. Everything together. We call the sound ROM module, the divide by 12 module, and we then decide the note of each different part of the melody based on this case statement right here as either A, A sharp, C, etc. We then put it all together in order to create the melody based on the octave and the different notes. We also had to define a certain frequency in order for the human ear to be able to listen to it. We made it a little higher so that we can make it more nostalgic and faster paced and more of an action tune. We divide the frequency by a certain value in order for the note that we want to listen to be at different octaves. For example, the frequency can be higher or lower depending on what the listener wants out of the tune. It can be a lower tone or a higher tone. We can output a certain note from the collection that SoundROM has. And essentially what SoundROM does is it decides what the note is because of this large case statement. Um, I think our sprite designs and our um, sort of visuals turned out pretty well. Um, we were really shooting for a lofty goal with what we wanted our uh, project to look like as we just talked about in our presentation. Um, I think we met a lot of the goals that we wanted. Um, there are some aspects I think with a little more time we would have been able to improve on. Um, but you know, I think we covered the basics of like the VGA usage pretty well. Um, this is our VGA controller module. It has all the basic setup stuff for the VGA. Um, with like our horizontal horizontal and vertical sync um, and the X, Y position of the uh, display. Um, this is where we get our uh, resolution of 640 by 480 um, with our front porch and back porch. So this is our main VGA display module. Um, this is where all the visual magic happens um, for the project. And um, like we said, it's a pretty important part just because that's how the user uh, one of the ways the user interacts with the uh, the game when they're playing it. Um, we've got our uh, declarations up here for um, some of the stuff that's related to the VGA display. Um, the 12 bits of color we have, it's the VGA, um, which you'll see in the constraint file. Um, our CPU and personal player health, um, as well as some states to see if uh, the uh, player is attacking or the CPU is attacking. Um, and here's our controller, um, which you saw, um, and that uh, is what allows the actual images to be displayed. Um, there's a lot of uh, registers um, being declared here um, because of how we decided to go about um, basically setting up our visuals. Um, you can see it for the player and the CPU uh, player that you're fighting against. Um, it's a little messy like this, um, just because uh, you know, we have to map everything out um, and then declare it all and then run it through the VGA to display. Um, but it um, it ended up being the what we went with just because um, we were looking into the sort of bit mapping um, and like hex value stuff. Um, but we decided to stick with what we knew just based off, um, you know, the experience we've had in the past labs using VGA stuff. Um, we've got the uh, health bars here as well. Um, and you can see these are the X, Y positions of the uh, different parts of the players on the uh, VGA display. Um, you know, we have it drawn out um, with all these different pieces that can be swapped around for when, you know, they're punching, when they're knocked out, or when they're just idle. Um, and then these are our converted hex value um, colors. Uh, we originally had used 24-bit color, um, but that ended up not being feasible with the uh, amount of VGA outputs. Um, so we had to minimize that down to 12-bit color um, with the hex values, uh, which was an interesting process to learn about. I'm really glad we got the experience to have to experiment with that. Um, and yeah, it definitely changed some of the colors around a, a decent bit. 
um, which was kind of annoying, but you know, it's a constraint we learned to, uh, to work with. And you can see we have a lot of uh, sort of conditional statements here um, where basically like, it checks to see, you know, if you're getting a keyboard input from the user, um, and checks to see if the, uh, you know, CPU is attacking or if you're attacking, and then displays uh, whatever that setup is uh, configuration from the different players uh, on the screen. So a lot of this is pretty similar, uh, repeat stuff. Um, but you know, you have to cover all your different scenarios during the uh, course of the game when you're fighting. And at the bottom here, we have sort of the actual VGA assign. Um, we only have to do this once um, because it uh, basically takes this conditional statement up at the top that we we're talking about, like the big conditional stuff, and then just outputs the correct uh, condition. Um, and that's what is displayed on the board. Uh, we also have our boxing ring here that we added uh, just for some extra visuals that uh, we think looked pretty good and added to the, the feel of the game. Um, this is our like menu um, where the user will get instructions and where they'll be looking when you first turn on the board, but before you start the game. Um, so it just got the name of our game, Brute Force. Um, and that's kind of uh, a funny thing we came up with while working. Um, we realized we were doing a lot of sort of brute force coding with uh, our, you know, some of our displays and stuff and some of our systems. So someone just thought like, oh, Brute Force, like uh, our style would be a good name for the game. Um, so that's the name we went with.